one day I want to do a movie with this guy. And then 20 something years later, you know, you're playing the main bad guy in It Man 2. You know, I mean, we're, we were all Bruce Lee fans and all Bruce Lee fans from the very beginning, we all knew Yip Man, you know, it's Bruce Lee's, it's Bruce Lee's master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew the name Yip Man when I knew the name Bruce Lee, pretty much. Sure. So it was for me. It was very. It's it's very cyclical, you know. It's uh, it's like wow, you know. This is taking a long time, and I remember saying to Donnie, I said, "Man, I, I you know, I wanted to work on on one of your movies so much, and I wouldn't I wouldn't have had it any other way or in any other film, you know. It was just just really really great to be there, and of course, Sam Hung, you know, you can't go wrong being choreographed by him. Oh no, of course not. And how how is a martial artist? How difficult is it? when playing a bad guy to kind of hold back, you know, because obviously you have this great ability and, but obviously the, the bad guy at the end of the movie, if it's, you know, at man two, if it's born to raise hell or whatever it is, you know, you've got to lose that fight ultimately. <laughs> How difficult is that? What, to lose a fight? Well, I mean, you know, growing up wanting to play the bad guy in movies, you realize that, uh, you know, one thing that, one thing that I did, and I think, I think this is one thing that Mark Houghton actually sort of taught me right in the very beginning was that, look, you've got to learn how to react. You know, if you want to have a career in film business, you've got to, re- you've got to, you've got to be able to make the star of the movie look good. So, you know, I, it's not about being able to throw those big fancy kicks and all that kind of stuff. When you're getting in the business and you, you, you're playing these roles, you've got to know how to react to make the star of the movie look good. So, yes, I've studied martial arts since I was a kid, but, I mean, you know, it's... To me, it's more performance. It's all acting. It's got nothing to do with fighting. I mean, I'm, I work with a lot of actors that kind of get carried away and they, they adrenaline gets going and stuff. But when we do fight scenes in movies, I mean, it's uh, it's all very sort of controlled, you know. It's all, I mean, it's 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 we know what we're doing, and and I think there's a sort of an ability that you get to be able to perform fight scenes. I mean, it's it's sort of a, I call it like a violent dance, right? You know? But there's the you know your, your job there is to you know keep everything safe. You know, it, it looks sort of chaotic and all that kind of stuff. It's organized chaos, you know, as Bruce Lee would say. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, which, so what are your favorite action films then that, that you sit down and you watch? You know, recently, I, you know, I really got into, uh, you know, it was always the, 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 the Chinese movies, the Hong Kong movies. Yeah. But then, you know, then it's, it's I think Wilson Yip and Donnie Yen really sort of had gotten my, interest back into Hong Kong films, you know, with Dragon Tiger Gate, Flashpoint, SPL, and then, I, you know, Ip Man. And uh, then, of course, Korean cinema. You know, you look at movies like Old Boy or Crying Fist. I don't know if you guys have seen that one, but Crying Fist is a really, really good film. And, uh, and then, of course, Tony Ja, and you get Thai cinema. And then, uh, you know, Gareth Evans and, and and the raid, you know, and you look at what they're doing in Indonesia now, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunately Hong Kong cinema is really taken a taken a back seat right now, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, you've got all these other guys, you know, in Korea, Thailand, Indonesia that are making all these movies that are sort of eclipsing what they've what they've been doing in Hong Kong for a while. I mean, there's no up and coming sort of Hong Kong stars really to to continue to carry that torch that jackie and samo and donnie and these guys had you know yeah was, um, some, was something like the raid was because obviously throughout i don't know movie criticism or, or or the internet or whatever the raid sort of like a ripple kind of became the big thing over the over last year did was that ripple sort of felt throughout the industry and did people think oh, oh okay, yeah we've got to kind of step up now or was it just oh they're, they're doing that thing we're going to carry on doing our thing or well, I mean, you know, uh, look, I mean, ask Larnell Stovall about it. He was the, the, you know, he's the fight choreographer on Metal Harlot, the thing that we did in uh, Romania with me and Scott Atkins and Michael Jai White, you know, and he, he um, was a fight choreographer on Mortal Kombat. And he's doing the, uh, the, you know, they're doing a remake of The Raid, the American uh, version. And, you know, he, he takes meetings with people and he keeps, you know, everybody keeps saying, we want to do something like The Raid. You know, right. everybody in Hollywood now, they take that movie, The Raid. And I, I was, I nearly did a movie last month, actually, this film called Extraction. It was very, very much like The Raid. You know, I mean, yeah. a, a movie like that does well and it performs on so many levels, certainly, the, you know, theatrically and everything, but in, on the festival circuit and everybody knows about it. And, you know, then everybody in Hollywood goes, but we want to have action like The 
the raid. You know, I mean, right. I just heard that, you know, Ninja Turtles, you know, Michael Bay, they're like, we want to have Ninja Turtles, but they're going to fight like they did in the raid. You know? So <laughs> that's what happens in Hollywood. You know, some, yeah. you know a, a movie sort of hits on a certain level and then Hollywood goes, yeah, we want to do something like this. So right. I've heard that many, many times. It's going to be like the raid, you know. I wonder why they're doing an American remake when there's not a lot of talking in the original. <laughs> but, yeah, and I think that what they're going to do is they're going to change it a lot, and they're going to add a lot more different characters and stuff. Sure. From what I understand, but uh, I mean, look, they're remaking uh, District Thirteen right now in Montreal with uh, with uh, Paul Walker. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called Brick Mansions. Yeah. It's Paul Walker and David Bell. Okay. So Cyril Raffaelli, unfortunately, sort of got the short end. And is he, is he going to be uh, leaping? From, is Paul Walker going to be leaping from buildings to buildings then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That'll be oh, yeah. interesting. Paul Walker and David Bell, yeah. It's called Brick Mansions. They're shooting it right now. But, I mean, certain movies, you know, certain movies deserve to be remade. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, not like Nikita and Point of No Return. I mean, it was, it was a stupid sort of basically a shot-by-shot -shot remake of a, an incredible Luc Besson movie. It was just a piece of shit with, with Bridget Fonda, you know. Was, right. There's no point remaking something like that. But when you're talking about The Raid, you know, I mean, Gareth Evans, you know, they're, they're just finishing up The Raid 2 right now, and I think he's going to do a third one. But, you know, to remake something like that, I mean, it's just a very cool, simple premise. And, you know, you get the right actors and the right action in there. You know, why not remake something like that? But, I, you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, are they going to remake Enter the Dragon? I just I keep hearing about that over the years. Oh, yeah. I think everything at the end, I think everything in the next 10 years will be stuff we've seen before. Yeah. Um, so... Well, we're going to have to run out of ideas, right? I mean, it's the internet and technology that sort of drives pictures and stories too. And, you know, certainly the, the advancement in CG, you know, has given opportunities for different movies like After Earth, you know. Sure, definitely. And when we were uh, talking earlier, you know, we mentioned Steven Seagal and, and uh, you know, you were saying, oh, great, um, about that. What was it like to work with him? What was it, uh, what was it like to work with Seagal? Because, I mean, you know, you've heard a million stories about the man. So um, yeah, what was your yeah. personal experience with it? Well, I, I, honestly, I had a really great time working with him. Um, I mean, it, it could have been better, you know, but uh, he... Um, <laughs> I, I, I just finished, um, I was actually shooting at Man 2 when Lara Chartrand, the director, called me and said, I'm directing my first movie with Steven Seagal and I want you to play the bad guy in it. So I was in Shanghai, just finishing up at Man 2 and I flew from Shanghai directly to Romania and started shooting on the picture. And, and so Stephen knew that I'd just finished working with Donnie Yen and Sam Hung, and he's known those guys and had a huge amount of respect for those guys for a long time. And he knows all about it, man, and he loved the first movie. So he he was really respectful to me right away. I mean, he, he really kind of embraced me, and it was, was really, really awesome with me. So for me, it was a wonderful experience. He, he didn't really, he wasn't really having a great time shooting the movie. This is Born to Raise Hell. But, uh, you know, he, he invited me to come into his trailer and we, we, we had some, some good talks and stuff like that. And to me, it was just great to, to work with a man. I mean, he was, he was brutally honest with me, you know, about how, where he is in his life and his career and all this kind of stuff. And for, for me, it was, uh, the, the only thing that was unfortunate was we didn't really have any time to do that and fight scene, you know, the scheduling is a problem with these movies sometimes, you know, and that's why, uh, on that thing I was talking about, Metal Hurling, with me and Scott Atkins for our fight, you know, I, I kept saying, listen, we're going to try and, and, and work it out so that we do our fight scene first up, you know, so that we, we, we get the fight scene out of the way and then they can do the other the other scenes, you know. With, with me and Steven on Born to Raise Hell, it scheduled us to shoot the fight scene at the end of the day, which was pretty much Steven's last day working on the movie. So we didn't have any time, you know, they were shooting other sort of second tier characters and stuff. And um, when it came to doing the fight with me and Steven, there was just no time. Um, and, that, and that's an issue, you know, when you're doing these movies and you're doing an action movie, but, you know, scheduling, they don't give us any time to do the action. So Steve was a bit pissed with that, and so was I. I was like, well, you know, it's a shame. But, you know, we, I got a chance to work with him again. He, he, he got me on um, True Justice's TV series that, again, Lara was directing, and they got me on that. Nice little fight scene in there as well, but, you know, it's just, they, they, they just shoot the fight so quick. Yeah. Not enough time. It's no. completely the opposite from doing movies in Hong Kong. You know, in Hong Kong, they spend a lot of time on the action and on the fight scenes, and the acting, forget about it, just run through it real quick, and it's the opposite in America. I think what it is is that in Asia, the action directors 
have a restriction name and um, a responsibility to to give the best action scenes. You know, when you hire Yun Wu Peng or Tony Ching or Tony Leung or Sammo Hung or any of those guys, the important thing for them is to have enough time to do the action. So when people watch those movies, they're really, really impressed. You're not going to be able to hire any of those guys and not give them the amount of time that they want to do the action because their name, their reputations and careers and their legacy depends on them, you know, delivering these really super action scenes. And there's not many people in America or American movies that you're going to hire and then they're going to have the opportunity to go, no, I need more time to do the fight scenes and the action. You know, the important, you know, the directors in Hong Kong, they're king. You know, in Asian cinema, when you, when, when the director is making a movie, they run the set, they're the king of everything, you know, and they get what they want. And it's different, you know, in the studio system, Hollywood, you know, you're talking about investors and, you know, having to deliver a picture on time and on budget. It, they, they don't give a fuck, you know, they'll, they'll cut you off, you know, if you, if you haven't, you know, you want more time to do the action and stuff? No, we don't have it in the budget. Forget about it. You know, tell a story, you know, shoot what's on the script and that's it. So there's not really many sort of action directors in America that have the ability to go, no, I need more time. But in Hong Kong, they do that. Jackie Chan, you know, will, will go, no, you know, we're going to spend $5 million more and, and another month to complete this action scene because I'm not happy with it. That doesn't happen in America. And that's why the movies over there, the action is so great. Cool, that's fantastic, yeah. So, what does the future hold for you then, Darren? And could we talk you into reading our script and teaming you up with Gary Daniels? <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 you know, I said before, I mean, I'd love to work with Gary again. Um, you know, I knew this producer years ago, and we kept we kept talking about, let's, 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 let's try to do something again, you know, me and Gary. And, you know, I think, uh, I think, I think I'm doing something with Scott probably pretty soon. You know, there's a few things. I mean, I'm up for a few, you know, TV shows and stuff like that. I mean, I think the important thing as an actor is just to keep working. You know, a good friend of mine, Russell Friedenberg, who I worked with on that movie, Legion of the Dead, he said, listen, dude, actors act. You know, don't try to be too picky. You know, um, just 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 keep working, you know, and on, on all different films, TV, different formats. You know, we did Mortal Kombat, you know, as a web series, you know. It meant who was a movie. You do video, you do TV, you know, just keep working. It just The important thing is the material, you know. Yeah. Just the material and keep working with great people, you know. And, and a lot of those movies that I did, you know, the fight scenes didn't end up, you know, really good because, you know, you know, I want to work with people like Lauren L. Stovall, you know, as a fight choreographer. You know, J.J. Yeah. J. Perry, these kind of guys that really know action and how to shoot fight scenes. And I did a lot of those movies where, you know, there was I was, you know, trying to choreograph. They didn't have a fight choreographer. I was choreographing stuff myself. They didn't even have money to bring even stunt performers in. You know, so the important thing is just to keep doing movies that, uh, number one, that people are going to see, but also to challenge you as an actor, and, you know, I just try to find, you know, stuff that's a good good acting roles, you know, yeah, and, and play different characters. It's nice as well that you 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 know you want to you want to be doing the action films as well. Well, while I still can, you know what I mean. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, I do as much action action movies as I can. I mean, I, you know, still work out three hours a day. I mean, what the hell am I doing it for if not for, you know, I could just you know, uh, it's nice getting hired on a film or a TV show where you don't have to throw a kick or a punch, but. I enjoy doing action. It's what got me into it. Yeah, well, the last couple I saw, the the, the package oh. and tactical force, I thought they were, because uh, I watched a few of yours in the lead up to, to doing the interview, and I just thought they were terrific. I mean, um, the package especially, you know, I've sung its praises yeah, online. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, you're talking about two completely different directors there. I mean, you know, tactical force was just... You know, you got Steve Austin and Michael Jai White, and they uh, logistically it was a bit of a nightmare shooting the movie. You know, there were a lot of issues, and the script. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it was okay, you know, but they um, they kind of changed a lot of things, and the director wasn't really open to to sort of any kind of collaboration, and, and you know, he wanted to, you know, what I mean, that Michael Eklund's character, you know, when he gets shot in the head, and then all of a sudden you see him later on, and he returns and he's alive, you know, yeah. after being clearly shot in the head with his brains blown back out of his head, yeah. because they didn't know how to finish the movie, and the the, movie, the running time was too short, so the director got this great idea. Well, hey, you know what? We'll just uh, we'll bring him back. 
well, you've already seen him get his head blown off. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and they, you know, so you're short on the running time. Well, let's come up with some other ideas. Maybe flash out some of the other characters. But he didn't give a fuck about one anybody else, any anybody else's opinion. You know? He yeah. Just, yeah. And so yeah, I think it was just you know just very rushed you know yeah i mean uh, I got the package the... the package on the other hand right you've got jesse johnson so you've got a real filmmaker there who's who's really you know from from the beginning 